The catering trade expects a 40% drop in business over the Easter holidays as many residents vacation outside of Hong Kong. Preparations for the start of the solid waste charging demonstration scheme tomorrow. And a new convoy of ships heading to the Gaza Strip with food and supplies. Hello and welcome to TVB News. Some restaurant owners said the Easter holidays failed to bring in as many customers as they had hoped because a significant number of residents decided to travel across the border. Mimo Singai reports. This was Shansha earlier today. Many shops were open but only a few customers entered. While the street remains empty, this area of Shansha was once popular among mainland visitors before the pandemic. This is a restaurant located in the area. Speaking of the number of diners it has received so far over the Easter holiday, the restaurant owner expressed a tinge of bitterness. <laughs> Residents decided to travel across the border or travel abroad. Our revenue has decreased to roughly 40 percent, she said. <laughs> this street in Causeway Bay has plenty of dining options, yet most of them were empty. <laughs> This man is pessimistic about the economy. Like the restaurant owner, he also said too many locals have left the city for the mainland. This man says streets are less crowded now because of the number of people traveling out of town. He says such a scenario does not help the economy. On his blog, Financial Secretary Paul Chan said while Hong Kong's economy growth remained stable in the first quarter of this year, businesses face challenges because of changes in tourist spending behavior. Chen said the government aims to help small and medium enterprises, including the nine measures introduced by the Hong Kong Monetary Authority to support the SME's cash flow requirements. Numbers 9, TVB News. The solid waste charging demonstration scheme is set to begin tomorrow at 14 designated sites in the city. Some residents living in such areas noted they are prepared to use the government mandated garbage bags, but added the measure may not lead to a reduction of waste. Authorities say they will conduct further reviews of challenges facing the implementation of the municipal solid waste charging scheme. Timothy Lee reports. Among the 14 sites selected for the waste charging scheme trial is this so-called 3 note building in Sham Shui Po. It does not have an owner's corporation or residence organization and has not engaged any property management company. A large rubbish bin was placed outside the building, allowing residents to conveniently dispose of their garbage. Some of them said they had already received from the government some 30 designated rubbish bags, which will be used in the solid waste charging demonstration scheme. This resident estimated that he only needs to use one such bag per day and is skeptical the arrangement will help reduce the amount of waste during the trial period. He believes the scheme is inconvenient, but added the trend of recycling is unavoidable. Regarding waste disposal charges, Secretary for Environment and Ecology Tse Chun Wan said the cost would change in accordance with the size of the bags instead of the weight of garbage. He hopes the measure will encourage more residents to reduce their amount of solid waste. Zhe emphasized he previously reviewed similar schemes that were implemented in Seoul and Taipei, where local communities only adapted to the measure after three to five years. Meanwhile, Deputy Chief Secretary for Administration Warner Chuck, who leads a cross-department team overseeing the waste disposal trial, said he will listen to more suggestions pertaining to challenges of the measure. He added the authorities aim to address the progress of the scheme at the Legislative Council in May. Some residents of the three note buildings involved in the solid waste charging demonstration scheme said they will gradually adapt to the new government measure. Authorities stressed they will continue to observe the behavior of participants in the trial to better coordinate the full implementation of the scheme in August. Timothy Lee, TVB News. Director of Housing Rosanna Law said on a TVB programming that the Housing Authority plans to incentivize individuals to report abuses of public housing resources to the authorities. Mimo Singai reports. 
The average waiting time for a public housing unit in the city has risen to 5.8 years. The Housing Authority launched multiple measures to combat abuses of public housing resources in October last year, such as requiring tenants to make declarations every two years that they have lived in the units. Those who refuse to make declarations or fail to do so in the two-year period will have their tenancies terminated. Director of Housing Rosanna Law said the authorities plan to incentivize individuals to report abuses of public housing resources. This year we are working actively on uh, giving incentive to individuals who provide us with uh, uh, important intelligence or information to the extent um, they are willing to give us their names so that we can issue notice again for uh, resuming these uh, public rental housing apartments. Uh, for these uh, people, we are uh, thinking of giving them some incentive, uh, a recognition and even some small monetary uh, incentive. Private developers can now tender for a site in Taiwan to construct subsidized cell flats under the government's private subsidized cell flat pilot scheme. Two more sites have been included in the scheme. Law is optimistic about private developers' reaction to the pilot scheme, although she agrees the housing market has been sluggish. A range of government measures, including the latest one announced in this year's budget, uh, that we have uh, taken away all the demand side uh, measures, uh, control measures. Um, the atmosphere, the sentiment has improved. Uh, sales volume has surged. Uh, the property price remains uh, stable. Uh, no obvious speculation has uh, uh, surfaced. So I think the situation is, uh, is good stable and under control. The invitation to tender for the Taiwan site will end in July. The housing department chief believes such a period is long enough for developers to respond to the policy. News 9, TVB News. Truce talks between Israel and Palestinian group Hamas are expected to resume in Cairo today, almost six months since the war erupted on October 7th. Egyptian and Qatari mediators are hoping to secure at least six-week ceasefire during which Hamas would release more than 100 hostages. This as a new convoy of ships left Cyprus for Gaza, carrying 400 tons of food for millions of Palestinians on the verge of starvation. Meanwhile, the children of Gaza are facing a bleak future in refugee camps set up for displaced Palestinians. Nasvi Karim with more. At the Muasi refugee camp in southern Gaza, Children frolic in a makeshift playground. Their parents hoping for a semblance of a normal upbringing, for a generation in danger of forgetting what it's like to be a child. Displaced Palestinian Wafa Abu Samra is worried about her daughter. We give them paper or a notebook and a pen and we tell them to write and draw, she said. They only draw a tank, a missile or planes. We tell them to draw something beautiful, a rose or anything, but they do not see these things. Raja Dawood, another displaced mother, said she asked her daughter of her memories before the war. The youngster doesn't have any. No food, no home, no positive memories, and for now, no future. Hope, however, lies in truce talks in Cairo, with Israel reportedly sending a delegation to explore the possibility of a six-week ceasefire. Hamas is reportedly waiting to hear what Israel has to say before sending any representatives. The main sticking point is that Hamas wants a deal that leads to the end of hostilities, while Israel insists on resuming military action until the Palestinian group is destroyed. Any truce would also mean the delivery of desperately needed aid into Gaza, where the entire population of 2.3 million is under threat from starvation, while 300,000 people in the largely isolated north are already mired in famine. A convoy of three ships carrying 400 tons of food left the Cyprus port of Larnaca on Saturday on its way to Gaza. It's the second seaborne aid delivery by the World Central Kitchen Charity Group, which first opened the maritime corridor in mid-March. The convoy includes a barge containing dates, the traditional food Muslims eat when breaking their fast at sunset during the month of Ramadan. The U.S. and other countries are also continuing to airdrop supplies onto the Gaza coast, a less efficient and hazardous method. Witnesses say at least a dozen people have drowned trying to reach aid that landed in the sea. <laughs> Meanwhile, more anti-government protests in Tel Aviv, with demonstrators blocking roads and clashing with police. Protesters want the hundred or so hostages held by Hamas freed and are also angry at how the Israeli government has handled the war. Nazri Karim, TVB News. 
Three members of a United Nations military observation group and an interpreter were injured in southern Lebanon on Saturday after a shell exploded near them while they were on patrol. The observers were part of the UN Interim Force in Lebanon, or UNIFIL. An investigation into the incident is underway. A UNIFIL spokesperson said the four were in stable condition, adding that all warring parties were aware of their patrols and their vehicle was carrying clear UN markings. The three military observers are from Chile, Australia and Norway. Israel said it was not responsible for the shelling. Clashes between the Israeli military and Hezbollah in southern Lebanon have escalated in recent weeks. Hezbollah said their attacks will continue until Israel ends its military campaign in Gaza. In Baltimore, engineers have started work on the intricate process of cutting and lifting sections of twisted steel from the collapsed Francis Scott Key Bridge. The aim is to clear enough debris to at least partially reopen the strategic Patapsco River waterway, crucial to the economy of the city and the U.S. state of Maryland. Orange sparks flew as workers began cutting sections of the bridge. The bridge crumpled into the river on Tuesday after a massive cargo ship, the Singapore flag Dolly, crashed into one of its main supports. Crews are carefully measuring and cutting the steel so it can be lifted onto a barge. Seven floating cranes, including one capable of lifting 1,000 tons, 10 tugboats, nine barges, eight salvage vessels and five Coast Guard boats are on site. Maryland Governor Wes Moore said the process will be long, but making a start is significant. Another vessel hitting a bridge, this time in the state of Oklahoma. Police say they closed a highway south of Salisaw after a barge struck a bridge over the Arkansas River. State troopers closed U.S. Highway 59 after the incident and diverted traffic from the area. The bridge, which crosses the Arkansas River, where it enters the Robert S. Kerr Reservoir, will remain closed until it can be inspected. It was not immediately known what caused the barge to hit the bridge or whether anyone was injured in the collision. Still ahead, at the Vatican, Pope Francis presides over Mass on Easter Sunday. And a rising demand for art financing services in Hong Kong. Pope Francis overcame concerns about his health to preside over Mass on Easter Sunday. The 87-year-old successfully led 30,000 worshippers in St. Peter's Square. This came just hours after struggling at times to speak during a vigil on Saturday evening in the Vatican. The frail pontiff has breathing difficulties and finds long speeches difficult. Francis, who had part of one lung removed as a young man, appeared in better form on Sunday as he carried out his duties. The leader of the Catholic Church was a last-minute withdrawal from the Eastern procession, Easter procession in Rome on Good Friday. The Vatican said he needed to preserve his health. The decision appears to have paid off as the Mass went well. Almost eight months ago, China suspended all Japanese seafood imports after Tokyo started releasing treated radioactive wastewater from the Fukushima nuclear power plant into the ocean. Media reports say experts from Japan and China held talks on the issue yesterday. Japan's foreign ministry said a dialogue between Japanese and Chinese experts on the discharge into the ocean of treated water was held in the port city of Dalian in Liaoning province. The treated water still contains radioactive tritium, but Japan insisted it was safe to discharge. Beijing and some other countries disagree. The Fukushima plant suffered triple meltdowns in March 2011 as a result of the tsunami that killed thousands in the region. The Dalian talks were the result of a November agreement between President Xi Jinping and Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida to hold science-based, expert-level discussions. 
Hong Kong is one of the world's top three art auction markets. Benefiting from zero tax on art trading, the industry sees a rising demand for art financing services in the city. Sakura Ip has more. Local artist Angela Yun recreated the city skyline using Hong Kong-made plastic toys. The frog icon on the screen is the signature of Frog King. Local artist Kwok Mang Ho. These are the items collected by William Lim, a local architect and art collector who purchases artwork from domestic and overseas markets. He said Hong Kong has an advantage over some other cities in art trading because there's no tax on artwork and its logistics services. When I um, purchase some artwork from overseas in a place where there's tax on artwork, um, I would, for me the problem is I will need to ship that back to Hong Kong. I cannot carry it. Once I carry that, um, I, I will have to pay tax. Uh, so Hong Kong is very, very um, easy for collectors who buy. Hong Kong is one of the top three art auction markets around the globe. Lawyer sets Hong Kong's simple tax system and well-established legal system work in favor for art trading in the city. We don't have any estate tax, we don't have any capital gains tax. There is no tariff and importation and exportation tax in Hong Kong and this simplifies the entire transaction process. Another thing is that um, Hong Kong lawyers are traditionally uh, very expertise in uh, cross-border deals. And Frequent art trading also drives the need for art financing. Law firms have received more and more inquiries from banks. A lawyer said banks prefer physical artwork to be stored in Hong Kong as collateral. Hong Kong is one of the few um, places in Asia um, that has started looking at offering um, art financing as uh, one of the financial products. And, um, and that actually facilitates art market being more fluid. They are very willing to actually do their art-related transactions in Hong Kong, no matter it's sell, sell, sell and purchase or lease or financing. They are very willing to um, have Hong Kong law being the governing law for their transaction documents. The Hong Kong Airport Authority is planning to build art storage facilities at the airport. The art industry believes that it will benefit the city's art ecosystem by attracting global family offices to allocate capital via art trading and financing services in Hong Kong. Sakura Ip, TVB News. That's the news. Thanks for watching. Have a happy Easter and enjoy the rest of the long weekend. Bye for now.